Complications of venipuncture. Venipuncture is the most common medical intervention and has a low complication rate. The most common complications of venipuncture are hematoma, phlebitis, sepsis, and syncope. Bruising or hematoma is a swelling around the venipuncture site resulting from blood leaking into the surrounding tissues. 12.3% of venipuncture patients will experience bruising or hematoma. Avoid the basilic vein as it tends to bruise the most. The basilic vein is near the brachial artery and several nerves, so a mistake here can cause severe bleeding or pain from nerve damage, neuropraxia. A lawsuit can result. Avoid the forearm, as it also tends to bruise badly. Stay in the antecubital fossa, the bend of the elbow, for blood collection. If you see swelling around the venipuncture site, then release the tourniquet immediately and withdraw the cannula. Apply firm pressure for two minutes. Keep the arm straight. Do not bend the arm upwards. Apply a pressure dressing and keep it on for at least eight hours. Hand veins may look suitable, but tend to roll and leak, especially if the patient is taking blood thinners like warfarin or heparin. Apply ice packs, preferably wrapped in a cloth, to the hematoma for 20 minutes several times during the first 24 hours after blood collection. Apply warm, moist compresses to the site for 20 minutes several times during the second day after blood collection. Clean face cloth with warm water will do. Reassure your patient that over the next few days the blood will be absorbed by the body, the bruise is healing when it turns yellowish green and then fades gradually. Tell your patient not to take aspirin or ibuprofen for 72 hours and to avoid lifting heavy objects with the bruised arm. Notify the doctor immediately if the hand gets swollen, discolored, or if the arm throbs, swells, becomes numb or painful, sepsis, infection traveling through the bloodstream, and phlebitis, inflammation of a vein, are rare. Avoid sepsis by cleaning the venipuncture site with iodine before the collection. If the patient is allergic, use alcohol swabs. Do not probe the site with the needle if the vein collapses. Do not use the same site twice in one day. This will help avoid phlebitis and thrombus, a clot. Only 3.4% of patients will have a serious complication from venipuncture. 2.6% of patients will experience low blood pressure and sweating, diaphoresis. Give orange juice or a sugary drink. Observe the patient for 20 minutes to ensure recovery is complete. Less than 1% of patients faint, called syncope, from vasovagal stimulation. It may be an autonomic nervous system reaction from fear. It could be an epileptic seizure. Support the patient on the way to the floor. Never restrain an epileptic. Roll the patient into recovery position on his side to prevent him from aspirating vomit into his lungs. Never place a spoon or stick between the teeth. Remember that collecting too much blood from infants can cause iatrogenic anemia. Ask the lab if the test can be performed on microtainers. Ask specimen handling for aliquot so several tests can be combined on the same sample. Speak to the ordering physician about ordering less frequently. Most children carry 80 milliliters of blood per kilogram of body weight. A healthy outpatient can give 4% of total blood volume. A seriously ill inpatient can give only 2% in 24 hours. We will learn how to calculate the maximum blood volume for safe collection in Module 5.